Hello, good afternoon. Hello. I am here to test my player's racket. Yes, please. Please hand me the racket. Thank you. What's the player's name? Gozi Simon. And he is from France. Yeah, he's French. And player. do you know his uh, back number just yes, by chance? 13. 13. Yeah. Okay. What we'll check first is uh, the supplier name and the brand name of the rubber in order to see that it's legal and admitted. So, this is supplier Yasaka, and this is the brand name Raksa 7. Fortunately, we have the ITTF numbers on it, so this means I just may collect the numbers. That's 83007, and the same on the black side, that's fine. Which means I have a number for the supplier, which is 83 and 007 for the bread. Just a quick check. What that is the this? supplier and brand is on the list of authorized racket coverings, shortly known as the LARC. So, and we just check if 83.007 is in. Because, as you probably know, only those rubbers are admitted which are on the actual rubbers list. So it's 83 for Yasaka. And here we have the 007 for Raxa 7. That's fine. Okay. So, brand and supplier is legal. Then next step? Next step is to measure flatness of the racket, because one problem could be if you measure thickness of the rubber and there is a bubble in the middle, then it can be legal on the outside, but with the bubble in the middle, it can be too thick. So, we have this smart device, which to put up here, and you can see it as well, yeah. what we measure is minus 90, yeah. that means that it's 0.19 millimeters deeper in the center than on the right and on the left, which is absolutely legal. Okay. So this is the red side of the flatness, it is minus 0.19, and the same thing of course is done on the black side, and again you can see it yourself. It is now minus 0.24, which is fine again because the limit is minus 0.50. That says half a millimeter can the racket in the center be deeper than on the outside. Great. The next thing to do is now measuring thickness of both sides. This device, we just compare the height of the wood in comparison to the height of the rubber. It's just measuring the difference of the two heights from this pin sitting on the wood here and these two positioned on the rubber. The difference, as we can see here, for you, it's 382. We make an average measure because there can be different heights on both sides. It's now 3.75 and this gives an average just 382. Zero, which means that the red side is legal. The same we do on the black side. And again. And perhaps to show it now to you from the other side, but I can turn it around. Thank and you. it seems that the black one is even smaller. It gives you 3.52 on the one yeah. side. And we do the same on the other side, which gives us 3.72. And perhaps to make a third check on diagonal basis, it gives us 3.74, which averages to 3.65, if I have calculated that correctly in my head, but I do it every day, so I think so. This means that the rubbers by themselves are not too thick, they have the correct brand and they are flat, so the rubbers by themselves are legal. Uh, what is the thickness measurement uh, which is not allowed? The limit is 4.0, that's set in the rules of mm -hmm. table tennis. You see 4.0, that's one digit. Yeah. We are measuring two digits. Yeah. This means everything up to 4.04 .04 is rounded down statistically to 4.0 yeah. and would be okay. Yeah. And everything that is 4.05 .05 and above is illegal. Okay. Thank you for the information. 
So, we have seen that the rubber is legal on both sides. It is not too thick and it is flat and the brands are legal. The next thing is one of the biggest topics that we have in table tennis right now. It's volatile organic compounds, which means things going in the air, gas, glue, rubber cleaner, anything else. And with this device, we are measuring that. This is called RAE, R-A-E. It's what the boys from the chemistry say. It's a photo ionization detector. That means the gas is becoming electronically charged and produces a current from one point to another. And you can measure in parts per million what the gas is that we get out of here. The rules say that the measurement will be 20 seconds for each rubber. We have a background level at first. This is 0.0, .0 at the moment, indicating that no gas is in the room. And we only measure the difference for 20 seconds. And it looks like this is a very clean rubber site because it almost releases no gas. Okay, the 20 seconds is over. We had 0.0, .0 at the beginning, 0.2 at the end, which is very good because the limit is 4.0. So we have only 5% of the limit. And this limit is already very, very small compared to the Enes boxes we had until last year. Uh, they discovered um, things that are higher by the amount of factor 10. So to get all the tuners and boosters out of table tennis, this device was applied. And we do the same on the red side. The background reading at start is 0.0. .0. And again, 20 seconds. I have the stopwatch here. I think this is produced by a special company for environmental care because normally it's used in environmental care and measurements and for military uses also. And the ITTF has adopted it to table tennis in a light version to get it cheaper and to get it calibrated to the things we need to do here. So this is our very smart device we use from this year on during the next years hopefully. Okay. The amount of gas released is almost nothing. It's very good. This is the most important thing that we have to do at the moment. And the last thing that we have to do with your racket is a gloss check. Gloss means if the racket is too bright, it can unsight the opponent. Just like blinding jewelry or yeah. things like that, that, he, that you may not wear. So. This is a gloss meter. It has an ultraviolet lamp inside. And you just put it on the rack and you can measure the reflection. So this gives us 11%, which is very good because the limit is 24. We can average this as well, but it seems it is 11 all over the rubber. This is very good. And the same thing, of course, on the black side. It's normally lower because uh, yeah, black is not so bright color. And in average, we have 6%, which also doesn't make any problems. These are the four measurements we do. Flatness, thickness, gas, and gloss. Uh, the general appearance of the record is very good, as far as I can see. There are no broken edges. No part of the rubber is missing. I tear away the trimming a little and I can see it's cut very well so you can see there's no part of the rubber standing over yeah. the wood mm -hmm. and it's no part of the rubber you can see on that side that's too short so the cutting is very good so I would say this record is all over very good it's okay you can play with it okay so I will turn my player we take it here we leave um, uh, because it is brought to the table okay mm -hmm. because the problem would be a player intending to cheat would, of course, exchange this readily controlled racket. And how will he get his racket back? The Not racket. at the moment. Oh, yeah. What is happening now yeah. is that I put it yeah. into a bag. The bag gets a small piece of paper. I write the name of your player. Guzzi. 
on the paper. This is Mr. Gozi. This is table number one at 1600 today. Yeah. And this means that we just keep the racket here. And one of our team will then bring it to the umpires together with your opponent's record, of course, okay. and it will be handed to your player directly at the table at match start. Okay. That's it. Okay. We're done. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, good luck for the rest. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.